Well, at this point, whoever sees the documentary, fine. Say, sis, Berlin. Okay, mark it. Yeah, two apple. Take one. A stitch in time, they say, saves nine. This was perhaps the reason why the bill for an act to prohibit same-sex marriage was brought to the floor of the Senate to prevent the practice of same-sex marriages in Nigeria. On the floor of the Senate, Senator Obende argued that opening the legal door to same-sex marriage in Nigeria would be morally and ideologically unsound. The Muslim religions forbid this. Christian forbids. The African traditional religion forbids it just got tighter on homosexuals in Nigeria as the Senate passed a bill banning same-sex marriage and public display of affection of homosexuals in Nigeria. Criminalizing same-sex relationships makes us refugees. It turns us into asylum seekers. The Senate increased the punishment for gay marriage to 14 years. Bill for an act to prohibit marriage or civil union entered into between persons of same sex, solemnization of same, of same, and for other matters related therewith, 2011, read a third time and passed. I knew when I was growing up, I knew I liked boys. I knew as young as primary five. Before, the first time I discovered I was gay, I used to admire fine boys. I like to see a fine guy and I was like, oh, this guy is fine, this guy is cute. It happened when I was in primary six. So I started having feeling for guys then, because my mom used to ask me, why guys, guys, because I love boys very, very well. And then I, I battled so much with the feelings, but I just realized that anytime I'm with girls, I feel happy though, but the sensation I get when I'm with my fellow boys is kind of different. I didn't feel bad because I didn't realize or notice if there will be any sort of implication coming my way or any sort of any kind of implication to it. It felt normal to me. My mom knew about it, and uh, when she finds out, she said that uh, I should go to a delivery center. So they took me to a place I went for deliverance. And to the extent of delivering me, I realized that they, the pastor himself is one of us. It's something that just happened. We didn't plan for it. Apparently the guy was older. When he took me from the deliverance, and he was praying and praying. After finished praying with me, he had sex with me the night. Anytime my parents are not around, because they were not really around all the time, so he always comes to the house. He brings some movies, from adult movies for us to watch. And then I just, I touched him and he, he didn't hold back. And then before he knew it, it, it happened. Um, later, I now called my mom and my sister and told them that oh, they should take me to a gym center for me to gym to look more muscular, not that too family. People get to see your feminism. You're walking on the road, they call you names, or you want to buy something and then they tell you, ah, why, why, why you behave like a woman? That, why you behave like a girl? Or you want to People, people have a way of trying to pull you down. 
because they probably know or suspect you're gay and then they they kind of rain abuses on you when i speak especially people say um he's a little bit girly when he talks you know and then that makes me uncomfortable sometimes i feel it's bullying you know sometimes when i try to mingle or associate with my friends like oh no 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 don't let me come with us uh his voice is so tiny his voice is so small and we can't m move with him no no he's just too gay he's a faggot i get that a lot there are certain times when you'll be very happy and very proud of who you are and then there are certain times when you'll be very depressed and mad and angry at yourself that why am i like this why don't i like football or why don't i like watching football it's a mix it's a mixture of happiness and sadness should i do something stupid should i kill myself sometimes i feel i should commit suicide but you know with time and the people I moved with, the people I mingle with, the people around me sometimes gives me encouragement. It depends on the environment at which you find yourself. You, you might find yourself among people that are very friendly and very open with you, and then you just feel among. You feel very comfortable telling them about your sexuality. And at certain times when you be among people that are very hostile, that even the mere thought of you talking about yourself, you can't even do it. I just want to hold you for a moment. she caught me when and then she collapsed i was even thinking because the person was on top of me then but when she i thought i've locked the door that's why i don't want to people to have sex make sure you lock the door because i use this jam key you have to lock it twice wow wow i like uh, the i make a very big mistake i asked the person going to lock the door because it's a stranger doesn't know how to lock the door but when my grandma came in when she saw us she collapsed i was even thinking what is what's wrong with this old woman that she have started to get. I don't know, I never knew it's what she saw. That's what, what made that collapse. My parents were like, ah, I want to do it here, because they like to go and play. I want to play game here. And I laughed. So I ate him on here. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm fucking gay. The perfect can stop gay. I look back for 72 days. I just leave them in the parlor, go to my room. I was locked inside the room for two days. I have nobody come. No friend to come and see me. Anytime my friend come and say that I'm not at home. So I've tried getting a response. Why this woman is behaving like this? I know why yes, there's more to that then. She lives in a house with two grown men playing with themselves for Christ's sakes. She doesn't even know what her tradition is. Yet she knows all about two men sleeping in the bed together. This is exactly why I haven't been home. I didn't want to deal with this your judgmental bullshit. I wish you were on drugs or stealing. At least I would have a name for, for this disgrace you have become. She stopped giving me allowances. Pay or boom on the day because on a normal day, woman for million hundred thousand every month. And I use the money to organize gay and lesbian party. That's what brings me out to the island. Timothy Bay Center culture. I'm I'm scared of them finding out actually. The problem is they reacted, they, they would be disappointed. And then sometimes I feel like I'm going to increase my dad's health status, actually. Like I'm going to make it worse and everything. Cause I, I, so I try not to, I, 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 can't, I can't stand the disappointment. I talked to her that for the fact that I'm moving with gay people doesn't mean I am gay myself. They called me, they begged me, begged me, begged me. Okay, well, am I ready to stop the game? I said, okay, no problem. Is that what they want? 
I feel bad that I can't be as out as I ought to be. I feel bad that I can't be me 100%. But this, this, these are my parents. I don't invite people to my house anymore. I stop bringing guys to the house. Tofi pe mo ti stop e At least mo sin se pa ti mi lo I feel one is a self denial total self denial it shouldn't be but for the kind of country I find myself in right now I don't have a choice than to deny myself of being who I am I've had to take on cases of violation of LGBT members within the community, from blackmail to extortion to stigma and discrimination and a whole lot of other issues. Being gay within the society and most cases we've handled has kind of torn the fabric of family because what most people find it within our cultural and religious society that we claim to live in. This practice has no place in our culture, it has no place in our religion, it has no place anywhere in Nigeria and in generally even on the African continent. If something does not exist in a specific culture, it would not have a cultural label or identity or name. There are African vocabulary that describe same-sex relationships. I've had uh, Yoruba people call Sagwa. I've had Hausa people refer to it as Enkushili. And those things would not exist if they were a Western importation. There wouldn't be a local name for same-sex practices if they were imported. My mom says she cuts both of us having sex where that is. Do you have any white friend? I said, I don't have any white friend. She last sat that who taught me. I said, nobody taught me. It's what has been in me since I was born. As the time I was growing up, I never, the, I, I wouldn't say I came into contact with uh, homosexual magazines or movies. I just saw myself liking boys. Does that mean that I probably seen gay movies? That was way back when I was young. So the notion that people say, being gay is un-African. To me, it's just absurd. I grew up within the core north of Nigeria, within a setting where transvestitism was a very normal, accepted practice in the community. The transvestite had his role. He went about his day, living his life, just like everyone else. And I look back from where I am right now, and I can't recognize that North that was so understanding, so welcoming to the transvestite person. Now that goes to show that culture really does change. In this instance, we are observing a negative trend that is being fueled by all manner of fundamentalisms. Culture is not static. It changes, it's dynamic. Over time, new ideas come in, new old ideas are rejected, there is compromise, there is uh, interweaving, there is uh, borrowing, there is sharing, and it keeps changing, it keeps changing. When I was in medical school, we were taught in psychiatry that um, homosexuality was a form of mental disorder. That was in the 90s, that was what we were taught. But with research and um, current findings, the World Health Organization has actually been able to remove homosexuality from the group of mental disorders, so it's no more considered as a mental disorder. I tell you the truth, many people in the streets of Lagos, not to talk of many other areas in this country, 
are wearing pampas. We are talking of mature men on account of the abuse of their inner or rectal parts of their body. It's not really a matter of start wearing pampas. It's a matter of developing what they call incontinence. Incontinence just means that, you know, the anus is supposed to keep um, physics in. It's like it has uh, a door. They call it a sphincter that keeps physics in. But if you practice anal sex, if you are raped or you are keep having rough sex or something like that, it's possible for you to damage the anal sphincter. And when that happens, you know, it might not be able to be completely to be retaining the feces inside and then it starts leaking from time to time. It's as a result of trauma to that part of the body. The issue of anal sex, I, I was at a conference, where was the conference? I can't remember. When somebody came to present a paper and the person, you know, did the study actually in Lagos, the person is from one of these institutions. And I was shocked when he said, oh, he did the study among women. You know, women just going on, on the street, adult women. He would go and interview them and he was asking them, oh, your husband, has he ever asked you for anal sex? And the women will say yes. So on the long run, when he actually did this um, result, he saw that a high proportion of the women had actually been engaging in anal sex, even with their spouses. To show you that the issue of, so if we are talking about pampas now, it doesn't have to apply to only men who practice anal sex. Then this, the same thing could be said of the women that practice anal sex. Now, it's like we're having a conflict between what science is saying, what religion is saying, and what some social norms are dictating. So it depends on who you are talking to. We are all Christians or Muslims or uh, African traditional uh, believers. As a Christian, Genesis 1, 27, 28, God created man and a woman and he blessed them and asked them to be fruitful i sing in church there were so many problems back then when i had a problem with a pastor who uh, perceived I was gay and because of that he made sure that I didn't get any solos and to me I felt that was discriminatory enough so I kind of lost my self-esteem. I felt like rejected and I wasn't wanted and it started pulling me backward from the things of the Lord and I didn't want to go to church. I always wanted to be at home. I wanted to sing and then nobody's giving me the opportunity to do that. So why am I going to church? And why do I want to serve a God that people discriminate me? The Bible we read today is what the colonial masters has presented to us. Why do they not want us to have access to the original Bible itself? and let's read all the accounts by ourselves. But they are obviously selling to us what they want us to believe and what they want us to see. I believe that Christianity, whatever it is, is your personal relationship with God and do not form the dictator for other people. What we are talking about is criminalization. Criminalization is going beyond your religion by using the law to enforce your religion. And this is supposed to be something which religion should not do. Mr. Energy, you know, we have to remember that this law prohibits same-sex unions. It doesn't prevent people from being gay. Nigeria is trying to prohibit same-sex relationships but is disguising it by giving it a misleading title. 
prohibition of same-sex marriage. Marriage itself is a bit um, overrated. It's not even all heterosexuals who want to marry in the first place. They just say same-sex marriage we don't want. And that's a wrong attitude. The bill has provisions that criminalize show of affection among same-sex people and it does not even define what that show of affection is. It leaves room for anyone to interpret a show of affection the manner they choose to. In Africa, we show each other love, we hug, we shake hands, we hold hands. People can walk the whole street holding hands and it before didn't mean anything. But with a bill like this, someone will just wake up and say, oh, he, Mr. A shook the hand of Mr. B and didn't let the hand go quickly. So there is something else in that handshake. From the interpretation, if you know someone who is gay and then you don't report, you're liable to 10 years. Okay, just like my mother now, she probably suspects that I'm gay and then it now gets to the, to the news that, oh, that I'm gay. And then she doesn't report me. She's liable to 10 years. What will happen to flatmates? What will happen to colleagues? Will throw all of them into jail? Access to health would be, would be reduced. Stigmatization will even increase. Those who, even those who live in HIV and AIDS, they cannot even access treatment anymore. So you have the name of the PE, um, name of the service provider, maybe TS, who is the PE working for, and then you record their names, whether they're new. It is NGOs that provide any form of support at all for LGBTs. If you go to a health facility providing HIV AIDS services, you'll find support groups of people living with HIV AIDS, but you won't find anything like that for LGBT. But with the hostile environment we are in now, if things continue the way they are going, we might not even be able to assess that. If there is any country that does not want to give us uh, aid or assistance, just because we hold on very firmly to our values, that country can keep our aids and our assistance. We should make that point very clear. This is a people who are not psychologically prepared, and so their natural response is one of Phobia. Not because that is the way they are or the way they always be or because they are Nigerians, that's the way they think, but because their psychology hasn't yet evolved to that level at this point. After the Senate passed its version of the bill seeking to criminalize same-sex marriage in the country, the House of Representatives took a decisive step to passing the bill. Those in favor of the motion that the House adopts the reports of the committee of the whole, say hi. Those against me, the eyes are it. Despite the religious and ethnic sentiments that seem to divide Nigerians on other issues, they appear united in saying no to same sex marriage in Nigeria. This bill is nothing but a way that the ruling class has, you know, discovered effective to move our attention from the issues that should be bothering us. We normally pay 3000 but the last bill now is 21000 I was surprised. They are working without, we were working on the, the litter. They were just exaggerating and... President Makoko in Lagos brings the grim picture to reality. Here, Nigerian citizens live in conditions that are described as unfit for human habitation. Reality.
penalty is right from the academy, the Nigerian police officer has known no better way to leave. Bay doused a dormitory in petrol and set it alight and shot those who tried to flee. 46 died. A June attack in a school in the town of Damaturu killed 11 teachers and students. In May, the Nigerian army unveiled a camp. Is this part of our priority as a country who is going through a lot right now? So many of us are not even interested in, 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 in looking for solutions for our nation. Rather, we're interested in things because of our religious belief, because of our biased mind. So I will tell them to focus and flex their energy or their muscles to other pressing matters and leave the gay people alone. I'm gay and I'm Nigerian and I'm proud to be gay. We don't want to be turned into refugees. The Nigerian Senate is sending us to jail for 14 years for being who we are, for loving who we want to love, for loving genuinely. They are sending us to 10 years imprisonment to, for supporting gay people, providing services for them. So what do you want? We want the, the, the Sodom law to be repealed. By extension, it includes activism, demonstrations, clubs, non-government organizations, and any other way in which homosexual relationships could be encouraged. It means that those of us who are activists cannot defend the rights of people who are arrested under a law like that, should it be passed. There is nowhere on earth where it is right not to defend human rights. Fanian, Eddie, a friend, a colleague, and a lesbian a feminist activist was murdered in Sierra Leone. And when I tabled the issue of violence against women to take on board violence that is perpetrated against uh, uh, lesbian women or bisexual trans women, um, there was a huge uproar in the conference room. I remember it was an artist, you know, but then there were a few feminists who could see exactly what I was talking about and they joined me to talk to the forum to make them understand that one of ours has just been murdered. And the fact that she's a lesbian does not mean she is not a woman. A lot of women in that conference, which was a, an African regional conference, a lot of women actually shifted base from being anti-lesbian issues, anti-bisexual trans women's issues, to being supporters of the cause. It didn't distinguish, it didn't say male human rights, it didn't say female, and neither did it say LGBT rights. It says human rights, where there are rights for all. It should be regardless of your sexuality, your gender identity, or your expression. It should be regardless of if you're having consensual sex with another man or a woman having consensual sex with another woman. What it simply says is human right, respect for the dignity of human person. Being gay shouldn't be, shouldn't make you, shouldn't make them deprive you of doing every other normal thing as human. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you passing by on the road and people, or you're passing by on the road, people, people will be calling you names. It does not mean, um, um, it doesn't mean you can't sit down, you can't walk. When you do not have all the elements as a human being to exude your highest level of confidence and self-esteem. It breaks you down, it diminishes you, it demoralizes you, it dehumanizes you. And you find most of these LGBT persons running and feeling like an outcast, feeling like they're already failures on their own and why not live the life of a failure?
and just diminish it away and rot away somewhere or like the worst case scenario, kill themselves. To argue that the law is beneficial to Nigerians is similar to arguing that a law that allows nine Nigerians to appropriate the property of one Nigerian is beneficial because at least it gives nine Nigerians something that they wanted. But it is bad in the sense that in order to benefit those nine people, it has to take away from that one person. Laws are not meant to take away from one to satisfy the other. Laws are meant to ensure equality amongst everyone. My religion sees homosexuality as wrong. As a healthcare worker, I'm supposed to provide healthcare services to everybody who comes my way. A time will come when all stakeholders will need to sit down and agree on a consensus. I think every gay guy will ask God that question, why am I gay? Why can't I handle the feeling of wanting to have sex with my fellow man? Why didn't you tell me? Eh? Because I didn't want to see that look I saw in your eyes this morning. Do you love me? Yes. I love you very much. I'm happy. Be happy for me. When you read through the Bible, there are places where even men of God did things that God didn't ask them to do. Or did that make God to hate them? No. He still loved them and still used them. You get so basically, I don't believe in, in the idea of saying that God hates gay people. God loves everyone. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. For the Bible tells me so oh.